Law. Lawyers and Judges Legal History Biographies. Practical Guide to Law and Law for the Layperson. By Aria Indigo. 2. Contents. Pages. 5 Forward. 13 Section 1 Lawyers. Michelle Obama. Montclair Campbell. Barack Obama. Nelson Mandela. Johnny Cochran. Robert Kardashian. George Carman. Abraham Lincoln. Thurgood Marshall. Margaret Thatcher. Brian Levison. 3. 53 Section 2. Judges. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Julius Caesar. William Blackston. Lord Denning. Baroness Hale. Rosalind Higgins. William Brett First Viscount Isha. Lord Richard Wilberforce. Lord Bingham. 80 Section 3. Practical Guide to Law and Law for the Layperson. 4. Forward. This book seeks to put the lawyers and judges who practice and adjudicate law in the limelight, giving detail on their background and charting the progress of their careers. We then go on to look at key information those seeking a practical guide to law might find useful. 5. 6. Adverts. Barrister London. Direct access barristers. Landlord and tenant. Family law. Contract. Debt. Wills and probate. Driving. Personal injury. Legal advice. 0207-867-3744. www.barristerlondon.co.uk. www.directassessbarista.org.uk. At Barrister London Instagram. Twitter at Barrister London. Go to www.linkta.ee forward slash Barrister London. For social media and professional links. 7. Collect these books too. Scan the QR code with your phone to visit the website to purchase. 8. 9. Marie Antoinette, a 2023 biography in English and French Marie Antoinette Anglais. Francaise. 10. 11. 12. Section 1 Lawyers. Michelle Obama USA Attorney. Michelle Obama, also known as Michelle. Lavorn Robinson Obama, is a lawyer and former First Lady of the United States. During her law studies at Harvard she worked on housing cases. As a lawyer, she worked at the law firm Siderly Austin LLP for some time in their intellectual property and marketing department, where she met her husband, former President Barack Obama. While at Siderly Austin, she worked on various cases, including takeovers, and also dealing with IP rights in relation to a television program. 13. As First Lady she focused on initiatives such as Let's Move, aimed at reducing childhood obesity, and Reach Higher which focused on education, particularly for women and girls. She also advocated for military families and veterans. Through her joining forces initiative, she also served as Executive Director of Public Allies, a non-profit organization that aimed to develop leadership skills in young people and increase their engagement in community service. She also worked as an Associate Dean of Student Services at the University of Chicago and as the Vice President for Community and External Affairs at the University of Chicago Medical Center. She also continued her advocacy for education and health through her speeches and books, like her memoir Becoming and her book American Grown, The Story of the White House Kitchen, Garden and Gardens Across America. As First Lady, Michelle Obama also did a lot of public speaking, both in the United States and internationally. She gave speeches on a wide range of topics, including education, health and wellness, women's rights, and civil rights. 14. Montclair Campbell, UK Barrister. Montclair Campbell is an English barrister which is the name given to lawyers in the UK who specialize in advocacy. He has been a barrister for many years and appeared in many cases in most of the courts in the UK. Barristers can often spend a lot of time traveling and he has at points 
traveled 4,000 miles per month for his cases. He has written articles around his areas of practice and also has provided careers guidance to those seeking to enter the legal profession. He has in the past lectured on the University of London LL.B Law Programme at Hoban College. 15. He encapsulated his legal career's guidance in his book. Mum and Dad How Do I Become a Lawyer? Barrister forward slash solicitor in England and Wales, UK. How to qualify as a barrister or solicitor in England and Wales, UK. Published in 2023 and available on Amazon. It is written with a wide audience in mind giving both young to older people considering the legal profession and insight into practice. He has also given people considering a career in law an opportunity to observe and learn about his work with mini pupillage opportunities. Mini pupillages are work experience opportunities with barristers. He was also able to sew even during the COVID pandemic with mini pupils able to have access to the remote hearings he was attending to by way of technology. He was determined to assist with their potential future careers in spite of adversity. In a case which he successfully in appeared in the UK Court of Appeal, the judge giving the leading judgment referred to Montclair's skeleton. 16. Argument as being commendably succinct. This was a case that concerned the civil procedure, rules and part 8 in particular. He was successfully able to demonstrate to the England Court of Appeal Lord Justices that his opponents, clients had failed to follow the procedure within the protocol concerned. Montclair Campbell is the holder of a first class honours degree in law and later became a matriculant at the University of Oxford. Barack Obama former USA president, lawyer. Barack Obama is a former president of the United States and a lawyer by profession. Before he entered politics, he worked as a community organizer and a civil rights attorney and was also the Harvard Law Review editor and president. During his time as a lawyer, he worked for the law firm Minor, Barnhill and Galland, where he was involved in civil rights and community development cases. He also worked as a lecturer. 17. And senior lecturer at the University of Chicago Law School, where he taught constitutional law. Obama spent time drafting motions, researching, and writing and also dealt with a whistleblowing case but was soon caught up with the world of politics. It's worth noting that Barack Obama's legal career was relatively short and most of his work as a lawyer was focused on community, organizing and advocacy. He did not have a long record of legal cases or court appearances as a practicing lawyer. He was also involved in pro bono legal work and served as a board member for various organizations that dealt with issues related to community development, housing, and civil rights. He also wrote a book, Dreams from My Father where he speaks about his time as a community organizer, and it provides some insights into the kind of work he did and the issues he was passionate about. 18. It's also important to note that after he entered politics, his focus shifted to public policy and legislation, and he worked on various initiatives and bills related to issues such as healthcare, education, and civil rights during his tenure as President. As a community organizer, Obama worked on various issues related to housing and economic development. He worked with various community groups and organizations in Chicago, where he helped to develop and implement programs and initiatives aimed at improving the lives of residents in low income neighborhoods. He also helped to mobilize communities around issues such as housing discrimination and police misconduct. As a lecturer at the University of Chicago Law School, he taught courses on constitutional law and race relations. He also served as a mentor and advisor to students who were interested in pursuing careers in public service and community organizing. During his tenure as a senator and later as a 
president, he continued to advocate for issues related to civil rights and social justice. He also 19. Worked to enact policies and legislation aimed at addressing issues such as healthcare reform, education, and economic development. In summary, Barack Obama's legal career was focused on community organizing, civil rights and advocacy. His work as a lawyer was relatively short and it was focused on pro bono legal work and serving as a board member for various organizations that dealt with issues related to community development, housing, and civil rights. He did not have a long record of legal cases or court appearances as a practicing lawyer, his change in career led to him becoming President of the United States for two terms. Nelson Mandela Nelson Mandela was a South African anti-apartheid revolutionary, political leader, and lawyer. He studied law at the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg, and went on to become a lawyer and advocate for the rights of black South Africans under the country's apartheid system. 20. Mandela was a member of the African National Congress, ANC, a political party that sought to end the system of racial segregation in South Africa. He was actively involved in the resistance against apartheid, and as a result, he was arrested, tried and convicted on charges of sabotage and conspiracy to overthrow the government. One of the most notable cases he worked on was his own defense, during the 1964 Rivonia trial, where he was charged with sabotage and conspiracy to overthrow the government. He gave a famous speech during the trial, where he defended his actions as a fight against the unjust system of apartheid. He was sentenced to life in prison and served 27 years before he was released in 1990. He also worked on the defense of other activists who were arrested and charged under the apartheid system, including Walter Sisulu, Gavan Mbeki, and Ahmed Kathrada. He also represented the families of those who were killed or suffered human rights abuses under apartheid. Mandela's work as a lawyer was focused on fighting the apartheid system and advocating for 21. The rights of black South Africans. He used the legal system to challenge the discriminatory laws and policies that were used to justify the system of racial segregation in South Africa. Nelson Mandela worked as a lawyer alert as part of the African National Congress, ANC, and its legal defense fund, rather than as a private attorney. His work was focused on advocating for the rights of black South Africans and challenging the discriminatory laws and policies of the apartheid government, rather than specific cases. One of the most notable cases that Mandela was involved in was the Ravonia trial, which was held in 1963-1964. He and several other leaders of the ANC were charged with sabotage and conspiracy to overthrow the government. The trial received international attention and Mandela's defense speech, known as the speech from the dock became famous worldwide. He was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. Mandela also provided legal representation for other anti-apartheid activists who were arrested and charged under the apartheid system, such as Walter Sisulu, Gavan Mbeki and Ahmed. 22. Kathrada. He also represented families of those who were killed or suffered human rights abuses under the apartheid system. It's worth noting that Mandela's legal work was not just limited to courtrooms, but also to political activism, lobbying, and negotiations. He was an important figure in the global anti-apartheid movement, and his work as a lawyer was closely tied to his work as a political leader and activist. One the Ravonia trial was held in the Pretoria Supreme Court in South Africa. Two the defendants were Nelson Mandela. Walter Sisulu, Gavan Mbeki, Ahmed. Kathrada, Raymond Mlaba, Dennis. Goldberg, Andrew Mlangini, Elias. Matsu Aledi, and James Cantor.
Three the charges against the defendants. Included sabotage, conspiracy to overthrow the government by violent means, and furthering the aims of communism. For the trial began on the 9th of October, 1963, and lasted until the 12th of June, 1964. Five the prosecution's case was based on the evidence found at Lilies Leaf Farm, a property in Ravonia, Johannesburg, where the defendants had been arrested. 23. 6. The police had discovered weapons, documents, and other evidence at the farm, which they claimed was evidence of the defendants' plans to commit acts of sabotage. 7. The defendants pleaded not guilty to the charges, and their defense argued that the evidence found at Lilies Leaf Farm had been planted by the police. 8. The defense also argued that the defendants were not guilty of sabotage but were instead fighting against the unjust system of apartheid. 9. During the trial, Mandela made a famous speech from the dock, in which he defended his actions as a fight against the unjust system of apartheid. 10. In his speech, Mandela said, During my lifetime I have dedicated myself to this struggle of the African people. I have fought against white domination, and I have fought against black domination. I have cherished the ideal of a democratic and free society in which all persons live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an ideal which I hope to live for and to achieve. But if needs be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. 24. 11. The trial received international attention and condemnation, with many countries and organizations calling for the defendants. Release. 12. On 12 June, 1964, the court found Mandela and eight other defendants guilty of sabotage and conspiracy to overthrow the government. 13. Mandela and three other defendants, Walter Sisulu, Gavan Becky and Ahmed Kathrada were sentenced to life in prison. 14. The remaining defendants were sentenced to terms of imprisonment ranging from 3 to 8 years. 15. The trial was seen as a turning point in the anti-apartheid struggle and brought international attention to the injustices of the apartheid system. 16. The convictions and sentences of the defendants were widely condemned by the international community, and the trial was seen as a gross violation of human rights. 17 Mandela and the other defendants were held in Robben Island prison, where they were subject to harsh conditions and were denied basic rights. 18 Despite being in prison, Mandela continued to be an important figure in the anti-25 apartheid movement, and his trial and imprisonment brought international attention to the struggle against apartheid. 19 Mandela's speech from the dock was widely reported and became an important symbol of the struggle against apartheid. 20 The Ravonia trial was an important event in the history of South Africa, as it marked a turning point in the struggle against apartheid, and it brought international attention to the injustices of the apartheid system. Johnny Cochran Johnny L. Cochran Jr. The 2nd of October, 1937, March 29, 2005, was an American lawyer, best known for his defense of O.J. Simpson in the trial of the century in 1995. He was also a civil rights activist, and he represented many high-profile clients throughout his career. 1. O.J. Simpson murder trial, 1994-1995. Cochran represented former NFL player O.J. Simpson, who was accused of the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman. The trial was 26. Highly publicized, and Cochran was part of Simpson's defense team. He helped to create the dream team of lawyers that defended Simpson. Cochran is known for his famous quote, if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit, referring to a glove that was found at the crime scene that was said to have Simpson's blood on it. The trial 
ended in Simpson's acquittal. 2 Abnaluima Police Brutality Case, 1997 Cochrane represented Abnaluima, a Haitian immigrant who was beaten and tortured by police officers in a Brooklyn police station. Cochrane helped to secure $8.75 million settlement for Luima, and several police officers were convicted of crimes related to the incident. 3 Musician Weapons and Bribery Case 1999-2001, Cochrane represented a musician in a case where he was charged with illegal possession of a weapon and bribery. Cochrane helped to secure his acquittal on all charges, defense team, and the case ended in an acquittal for Jackson. Cochrane also represented many other high-profile clients throughout his career. In addition to his work as a lawyer, Cochrane was also a civil rights activist, and he, 27, worked to improve the lives of marginalized communities. Cochrane was widely regarded as one of the most successful and influential criminal defense attorneys of his time. He was known for his ability to connect with juries and for his skillful use of the media to shape public opinion in his clients' favor. Cochrane was also known for his ability to select and assemble a team of lawyers that were able to work together effectively, which was evident in the O.J. Simpson case, which was known as the dream team of lawyers. Cochrane was also known for his ability to effectively cross-examine prosecution witnesses and for his ability to present complex legal concepts in a way that was easy for juries to understand. Cochrane was also known for his ability to use the media to shape public opinion in his clients' favor, and for his ability to effectively communicate with the media during high-profile trials. Cochrane was also known for his ability to connect with juries, and for his ability to present his clients in a sympathetic light. Cochrane also wrote several 28 books, including Journey to Justice, 1996, in which he discussed his legal career and his work as a civil rights activist and a lawyer's life, 2002, in which he discussed his most famous cases and the lessons he learned from them. Cochrane's work as a lawyer and civil rights activist had a significant impact on the legal system and society. He helped to change the way in which high-profile criminal cases were tried and helped to bring attention to issues of racial injustice and police misconduct. Cochrane's legacy continues to be felt in the legal profession, and he is remembered as a pioneering lawyer who fought for justice and equality for all. Cochrane also received numerous awards and honors throughout his career, including being inducted into the National Bar Association Hall of Fame and receiving the NAACP's Thurgood Marshall Lifetime Achievement Award. Cochrane's work and legacy continue to inspire many lawyers and civil rights activists. Cochrane's work as a lawyer, and his ability to represent high-profile clients and to defend their rights, helped to change the legal system, and 29. His work as a civil rights activist helped to bring Attention to issues of racial injustice and police misconduct. Cochrane also contributed to the field of legal education by teaching a course on trial advocacy at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, School of Law, where he shared his experience and knowledge with law students. Cochrane also worked to promote diversity in the legal profession, and he was a founding member of the National Bar Association's Rainmaker program, which was established to increase the number of African-American partners at major law firms. Cochrane was also a member of the American Bar Association's ARBA Commission on Opportunities for Minorities in the Profession and was a member of the ARBA's House of Delegates. Cochrane was also a member of the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. NACDL, and the Black Lawyers Association of Los Angeles. 30. Cochrane's work also extended to the international 
Arena, he was a member of the International Criminal Bar and he was a member of the International Criminal Courts Defense Office. Cochrane's representation in high-profile cases, such as the O.J. Simpson case, helped to raise public awareness about issues of race and justice in the legal system and this helped to bring about changes in the way in which the legal system operates. Cochrane also served on the board of directors of the Lawyers' Committee for Civil Rights under law, an organization that works to protect civil rights and to promote equal justice for all. Cochrane's work as a lawyer and civil rights activist was widely recognized, he received numerous awards and honors throughout his career, including the National Bar Association's Presidential Award, the California Bar Association's Wiley W. Manuel Pro Bono Award, and the Los Angeles County Bar Association's Presidential Award. Cochrane's work as a lawyer and civil rights activist continues to inspire many people and his legacy continues to be felt in the legal profession. Cochrane's work as a lawyer helped to change the way in which high-profile criminal cases were tried, and his work as a civil rights activist helped. 31. To bring attention to issues of racial injustice and police misconduct. Robert Kardashian. Robert Kardashian, the 22nd of February, 1944. The 30th of September, 2003, was an American lawyer and businessman, who was best known for being a close friend and attorney of O.J. Simpson. During his 1995 murder trial, he was also a businessman and reality TV star. O.J. Simpson murder trial, 1994-1995. Kardashian was a member of Simpson's defense team and was one of his closest friends. He helped to prepare Simpson's defense and was present during the trial. In addition to his work on the O.J. Simpson trial, Kardashian had a diverse legal practice that included representing clients in criminal cases, civil litigation, and business matters. 32. Kardashian also represented clients in a variety of legal matters such as divorce, child custody, and property disputes. Kardashian also represented several high-profile clients in the entertainment industry, such as musicians, actors and other celebrities. Kardashian also worked on several criminal cases, including drug possession and DUI cases. Kardashian also worked on several civil litigation cases, including personal injury cases, contract disputes and other types of civil litigation. Kardashian was also involved in several business-related cases, including contract disputes, intellectual property matters, and other types of business litigation. Kardashian was a skilled negotiator and was known for his ability to resolve disputes in a timely and efficient manner. Kardashian was also known for his ability to maintain a high level of confidentiality when representing clients in sensitive matters. Kardashian was also known for his ability to effectively communicate with clients and to provide them with clear and concise legal advice. Kardashian was also known for his ability to maintain a high level of professionalism and integrity when representing clients. 33. Kardashian was well respected by his peers in the legal profession and was known for his knowledge of the law and his ability to effectively represent clients. Kardashian was also an active member of the legal community, and he was involved in several legal organizations and professional associations. Kardashian was also known for his philanthropy, and he was involved in several charitable organizations and causes. George Carman George Carman QC, 1929-2001, was a British barrister, who is considered one of the most renowned libel and defamation lawyers of his time. He was known for his high-profile libel cases and representing clients from the worlds of entertainment, politics, and the media. He was particularly well known for his cross-examination skills in court, and was considered a master of 
The Art of Advocacy. He also wrote several books, including an autobiography and several volumes of memoirs detailing some of his most famous cases. He passed away in 2001. 34. George Carman QC was involved in throughout his career as a barrister. He was involved in many high-profile cases, both in the UK and internationally, representing clients from various fields including politics, entertainment and media. Some of his notable cases included the following. As parties. Jonathan Aitken. Jeffrey Archer. Elton John. Mohamed al -Fayed. This is not an exhaustive list of all the cases that Carman was involved in, but it gives an idea of the breadth of high-profile cases he was involved in during his career. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln, 1809-1865, was the 16th President of the United States, serving from March, 1861 until his assassination in April, 1865. He led the United States through its civil war. Its bloodiest war and perhaps its greatest moral, constitutional, and political crisis. He is widely considered one of America's greatest heroes due to his role as leader in preserving the Union, ending slavery, strengthening the federal 35. Government and modernizing the economy. However, before his presidency, Lincoln was a lawyer and had a legal career that lasted for nearly 25 years. Here are some notable legal cases that Lincoln was involved in. Abraham Lincoln was a lawyer in Illinois before he became president mainly dealing with transport cases. Lincoln represented the Illinois Central Railroad in a case that was significant in his legal career. The case involved the construction of a bridge over the Mississippi River, and it was a complex legal dispute that lasted for years. Lincoln was able to successfully argue the case on behalf of the railroad and secure a favorable ruling for his client. Lincoln represented the city of Quincy in a case involving the construction of a levee. The case was significant because it was one of the first times that Lincoln represented a government entity in a legal dispute. He was able to successfully argue the case on behalf of the city and secure favorable ruling for his client. Lincoln represented a man named Jameson in a case involving a land dispute. The case was significant because it was one of the first times 36 that Lincoln represented a private individual in a legal dispute. He was able to successfully argue the case on behalf of his client and secure favorable ruling. These cases, along with many others, helped Lincoln to establish himself as a respected lawyer in Illinois and gain valuable experience in arguing cases in court. His legal experience helped him to develop the skills he would later use as president, such as his ability to make persuasive arguments and his understanding of the law and the legal system. Lincoln represented a man named William Duff Armstrong in the Almanac trial of 1858. Case was a murder trial and Lincoln defended Armstrong, who was accused of killing James Preston Metzger. The case was significant because Lincoln successfully used an almanac to prove that it would have been physically impossible for someone to have witnessed Armstrong to have committing the murder at the time it was alleged to have occurred due to the angle and low ability. This was one of Lincoln's most famous trials and established him as a skilled criminal defense attorney. 37. Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall was an American lawyer and civil rights activist who served as the first African American Supreme Court Justice. He was born in Baltimore, Maryland, in 1908, and grew up in a lower middle class neighborhood. He attended Frederick Douglass High School and later went on to graduate from Lincoln University and Howard University Law School. Marshall began his career as a lawyer working for the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP. He worked on 
several important cases, including the landmark case of Brown v. Board of Education in 1954, which declared that segregation in public schools was unconstitutional. He also worked on other cases that helped to end racial discrimination in housing, voting, and other areas. Later in his career, Marshall was appointed to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit and then nominated by President Lyndon B. Johnson to the Supreme Court of the United States, becoming the first African-American justice to 38. Hold this position. He served on the court from 1967 to 1991. Marshall's legacy in law is significant. His work as a lawyer and judge helped to end racial discrimination in the United States and to ensure equal rights for all citizens. He is remembered for his commitment to justice and his dedication to protecting the rights of marginalized communities. Throughout his legal career, Marshall argued 32 cases before the Supreme Court and was involved in many more as a lawyer for the NAACP. Some of his most notable cases include Smith v. Allwright, 1944, which invalidated the white primary system used in Texas and other southern states to exclude African American voters from primary elections. Shelley v. Kramer, 1948, which held that state courts could not enforce racially restrictive covenants in property deeds. Brown v. Board of Education, 1954, which declared that segregation in public schools was unconstitutional. 39. Gamillion v. Lightfoot, 1960, which invalidated a redistricting plan designed to dilute the voting strength of African Americans in Tuskegee, Alabama. Loving v. Virginia, 1967, which struck down laws banning interracial marriage. After his retirement from the Supreme Court, Marshall continued to speak out on issues of civil rights and social justice. He died in 1993, but his legacy lives on through the many legal precedents he helped to establish and the countless people whose lives were impacted by his work. Marshall's legal work and advocacy have had a lasting impact on the United States. His role in the civil rights movement helped to end legal segregation and discrimination, and his work on the Supreme Court helped to further solidify these gains into law. He was a strong advocate for the rights of minorities, the poor, and other marginalized groups, and his decisions and dissents often reflected this commitment. He supported abortion rights as urged in the Supreme Court in Roe v. Wade 1973. His judicial philosophy was centered on the principles of human dignity and equality. He 40. Believed that the Constitution should be interpreted in a way that would protect the rights of all people, regardless of their race, gender, or socioeconomic status. He was a strong supporter of affirmative action, and believed that the government had a role to play in ensuring that all citizens had an equal opportunity to succeed. Marshall's legacy has been celebrated by legal scholars, civil rights activists, and many others. He is remembered as a trailblazer and a champion of justice, and his contributions to American law and society will be remembered for many years to come. His legacy also lives on through the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, which is dedicated to providing support and opportunities to students, attending historically black colleges and universities. In addition to his legal work, Thurgood Marshall also made significant contributions to American society through his public speaking and writing. He was a passionate and powerful speaker, and he often used his platform to raise awareness about issues of civil rights and social justice. He wrote several articles and essays, which were 41 published in various newspapers and magazines, and his speeches were widely covered by the media. His speeches and writings helped to educate the public about the need for racial equality and the 
importance of protecting the rights of minorities. He also spoke out on issues such as poverty, economic inequality, and the importance of education. Marshall's speeches and writings have been widely anthologized and continue to be studied. Today, they provide a valuable insight into his thoughts on the issues of his time, and they continue to inspire and inform discussions of civil rights and social justice. In conclusion, Thurgood Marshall was an American lawyer and civil rights activist who played a significant role in shaping American law and society. His legal work helped to end legal segregation and discrimination and his speeches and writings helped to educate the public about the need for racial equality and the importance of protecting the rights of minorities. He continues to be remembered as a trailblazer and a champion of justice, and his contributions to 42. American law and society will be remembered for many years to come. Margaret Thatcher Margaret Thatcher was a British politician who served as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom from 1979 to 1990. She was the first woman to hold the office of Prime Minister in the United Kingdom. Before entering politics, Margaret Thatcher worked as a lawyer and research chemist. She was a pupil barrister at Red Lion Chambers at one point. Thatcher studied at Somerville College, Oxford, where she received a degree in chemistry and later trained as a lawyer. She qualified as a barrister in 1954 and practiced law primarily in the areas of tax and patent law. She worked as a research chemist for a time before becoming a barrister, but it was her work as a lawyer that helped her to develop her 43 political beliefs and laid the foundation for her later political career. She mainly focused on patent and tax law and was a member of the Conservative Party. She was elected to the British Parliament in 1959, representing the constituency of Finchley, in London. From there, she worked her way up through the ranks of the Conservative Party, becoming the party's leader in 1975, and then the Prime Minister in 1979. During her time as Prime Minister, Thatcher implemented a number of policies that came to be known as Thatcherism which included a focus on free market economics, deregulation, and reducing the role of the state in the economy. Her policies were controversial and led to significant changes in British society, but she remained in power for over 11 years. Brian Levison 44. Brian Levison is a British judge and legal commentator. He is currently the president of the Queen's Bench Division of the High Court of England and Wales. He was appointed to this position in 2017, and he also serves as the head of criminal justice for England and Wales. Levison's career as a judge began in 1996 when he was appointed as a judge of the High Court of Justice. He later served as a Lord Justice of Appeal, and in 2011 he was appointed as a judge of the Court of Appeal. Levison is best known for his work on the Levison Inquiry, which was established in 2011 to investigate the culture, practices, and ethics of the British press. The inquiry was prompted by revelations of phone hacking by newspapers and other unethical practices by the press. The Levison Inquiry produced a report in 2012 that called for a new system of press regulation, which was implemented in the form of the Independent Press Standards Organization. If so, Levison is also known for his work on other high profile legal cases, including the inquiry into the police handling of the Hillsborough disaster, in 45, which 96 people were killed at a football stadium. In 1989, and the trial of serial killer Stephen Port, Levison is considered an expert in the field of media law and has written several articles on the subject of press regulation and the relationship between the media and the courts. His work has been widely respected in the legal community, and he continues to be involved in important 
legal cases and inquiries. In addition to his work on the Levison inquiry and other high-profile cases, Levison has also made significant contributions to the field of criminal justice. He has served as the president of the Queen's Bench Division since 2017, and in this role, he has been responsible for overseeing the administration of criminal justice in England and Wales. He has also been involved in developing and implementing new policies and procedures to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the criminal justice system. Levison is also known for his work on the issue of judicial independence. He has spoken out on several occasions about the importance of protecting the independence of the judiciary and the need to ensure that judges are able to make 46. Impartial and independent decisions without fear of political interference. Levison has also been involved in the development of new technologies to improve the delivery of justice. He has been a vocal advocate for the use of virtual and remote hearings to improve access to justice and reduce delays in the court system. Throughout his career, Levison has been recognized for his contributions to the legal profession. He has received several awards and honors, including being appointed as a Knight Bachelor in 2017 for his services to the Administration of Justice. In conclusion, Brian Levison has been known for being highly respected judge and legal commentator in the United Kingdom. He is best known for his work on the Levison Inquiry, which investigated the culture, practices, and ethics of the British press, but he has also made significant contributions to the field of criminal justice, judicial independence, and the use of technology in the legal system. His work has been widely respected in the legal community. 47. And shaped the legal landscape in the United Kingdom. Courtney Griffiths QC. Courtney Griffiths QC is a British barrister. He is a leading criminal lawyer and a member of the Bar in England and Wales. He is a Queen's Counsel, QC, which is a distinction that is awarded to barristers who have demonstrated exceptional ability and experience in their field. Griffiths has a reputation as a skilled and experienced advocate, with a particular expertise in complex and high profile criminal cases. He has represented clients in a wide range of Criminal matters, including cases involving murder, fraud, and organized crime. Griffiths has also been involved in a number of important appeals. Griffiths is a highly respected member of the legal profession and has been 48. Recognized for his contributions to the field of criminal law. He continues to be involved in important legal cases, representing clients and advising on legal matters. In addition to his work as a barrister, Griffiths is also a respected legal commentator and commentator on legal and criminal justice issues. He has written articles and opinion pieces for various newspapers and legal journals, and is often quoted in the media on issues related to criminal law and procedure. Griffiths is also active in professional organizations, and has held various leadership positions within the legal profession. He has served as a member of the Council of the Bar, the governing body of the Bar of England and Wales, and as chairman of the Criminal Bar Association, the professional association for criminal barristers in England and Wales. 49. He is also a lecturer and has delivered speeches and presentations on various legal topics, particularly on criminal law and procedure, and has also been a regular speaker at conferences and seminars. Furthermore, Griffiths has also been appointed to various government and non-government bodies to advise on legal and criminal justice issues. He has served as a member of the Sentencing Council for England and Wales, which is responsible for developing sentencing guidelines for the courts, and as a member of the Criminal Cases Review Commission, which is responsible for investigating alleged miscarriages of justice.
In conclusion, Courtney Griffiths QC is a highly respected and experienced barrister in the United Kingdom. He has a reputation as a skilled and experienced advocate, with a particular expertise in complex and high-profile criminal cases. He is also a respected legal commentator and commentator on legal and criminal justice issues, and have been appointed to various government and non-government bodies to advise on legal and criminal justice issues. He continues to be active in the legal profession and is widely 50. Recognized for his contributions to the field of criminal law. Secret Barrister. Who is the Secret Barrister in the UK? The Secret Barrister is the pseudonym of a British barrister who writes about the legal system in the United Kingdom. The identity of the Secret Barrister is not publicly known. They began writing in 2015, and since then, has written several books, articles, and opinion pieces on various aspects of the legal system, including criminal justice, civil justice, and legal aid. The secret barrister's writing is known for its candid and often critical perspective on the legal system, and for highlighting the issues and challenges faced by lawyers, defendants, and other members of the legal system. The secret Barrister has also been vocal about the importance of legal aid, the need for reform in the criminal justice system, and the importance of access to justice for all. 51. The Secret Barrister's first book, The Secret Barrister, Stories of the Law and How It's Broken was published in 2018, and was widely acclaimed. The book is a collection of essays and stories that provide an inside view of the criminal justice system in the United Kingdom, and it has been widely praised for its insight, wit, and canned approach. The Secret Barrister's writing has been featured in various publications, including The Guardian, The Times, and The Independent. The Secret Barrister has also been interviewed by various media outlets, and has been invited to speak at various conferences, events, and panel discussions. In conclusion, The Secret Barrister is a pseudonymous British barrister who writes about the legal system in the United Kingdom. The identity of The Secret Barrister is not publicly known, but their writing is known for its candid and often critical perspective on the legal system, and for highlighting the issues and challenges faced by lawyers, defendants, and other members of the legal system. 52. Section 2. Judges. 53. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Ruth Bader Ginsburg was an associate justice of the Supreme Court of the United States from 1993 until her death in September 2020. She was appointed by President Bill Clinton and served for 27 years. Prior to her appointment to the Supreme Court, Ginsburg had a distinguished career as a lawyer and a judge. As a lawyer, Ginsburg began her legal career as a law clerk for the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. She later worked as a lawyer for the American Civil Liberties Union, a CLU, where she was a key figure in the organization's women's rights project. She was involved in several important cases that challenged gender discrimination, and she helped to establish legal. 54. Precedent that protected the rights of women and other marginalized groups. One of her notable cases was Reed v. Reed, in which she argued that an Idaho law that gave preference to men over women when it comes to appointing administrators of estates was discriminatory. The Supreme Court ruled in her favor, setting the precedent that the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause applies to gender discrimination. She also argued and won several other cases before the Supreme Court, including Wayne Berger v. Wiesenfeld, which established that men and women should be treated equally under social security laws, and Frontier v. Richardson, which established that men and women in the military should be treated equally with regards to 
benefits. As a judge. After her work as a lawyer, Ginsburg was appointed as a judge on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit in 1980 by President Jimmy Carter. She served on the court for 13 years, during which time she 55 became known for her thoughtful and well reasoned opinions. During her time on the Court of Appeals, she wrote several notable opinions, including one in which she found that the National Institute of Health's NIH grant-making process was discriminatory against women. In 1993, Ginsburg was nominated by President Bill Clinton to the Supreme Court of the United States, and was confirmed by the Senate. As a Supreme Court Justice, she continued to be a strong voice for gender equality and other civil rights issues. She wrote several influential opinions, including United States v. Virginia, in which the court held that the state supported Virginia Military Institute could not exclude women, and Olmsted v. L.C., in which the court held that individuals with disabilities have a right to receive state-funded services in community-based settings, rather than in institutions. Throughout her career as a lawyer and a judge, Ginsburg was known for her tireless work to promote gender equality and the rights of marginalized groups. She was a trailblazer in the legal profession, and her work helped to shape the law and paved the way for greater equality. 56. And justice for all. She will be remembered as a legal icon and an inspiration to many. As a Supreme Court Justice, Ginsburg also wrote notable dissents, including Ledbetter v. Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company in which the majority upheld that Lily Ledbetter, a woman who was paid less than her male counterparts, had to file her discrimination claim within 180 days of her first paycheck, even though she only found out about the discrimination much later. This decision was later overturned by the Lily Ledbetter Fair Pay Act of 2009. Ginsburg also dissented in the case of Pure v. Hobby Lobby Stores, in which the majority held that closely held for-profit companies can be exempt from a regulation that their health plans cover contraception for women, based on religious objections. She also dissented in Shelby County v. Holder, where the majority struck down a key provision of the Voting Rights Act, which protected minority voters from discrimination. 57. In addition to her work as a judge, Ginsburg also taught as a visiting professor at several law schools, including Harvard Law School and Columbia Law School. She also wrote several books and articles on various legal topics. Throughout her career, Ginsburg was widely respected and admired for her intellect, her commitment to justice, and her ability to make complex legal issues accessible to a wide audience. Her work as a lawyer, a judge, and a teacher will continue to inspire generations to come. Julius Caesar Julius Caesar was a Roman general and statesman who played a critical role in the events that led to the demise of the Roman Republic and the rise of the Roman Empire. He was also a skilled orator and writer, and his commentaries on the Gallic Wars and the Civil Wars have been an important source of historical information. While Julius Caesar was not a judge in the traditional sense, he served as a governor and a consul, which gave him power over the legal 58 system and the ability to make decisions that affected the Roman Republic. During his time as governor of Gaul, Caesar made a number of important legal reforms, including the establishment of Roman law in the conquered territories, which helped to bring stability to the region. He also appointed officials to administer justice and enforce the law in the territories under his control. In addition, Caesar was known for his fairness and impartiality as a judge, and he was often called upon to settle disputes and resolve legal matters. As a consul, Julius Caesar was the chief executive of the Roman Republic, and he had 
significant powers over the government and the legal system. He was able to pass laws, veto legislation, and command the Roman army. He also had the power to appoint officials to key positions, including judges, and to remove them from office. It is clear that Julius Caesar played an important role in the legal system of the Roman Republic, both as a governor and as a consul. He was known for his fairness and impartiality as a judge, and for the legal reforms he instituted. However, 59. His actions ultimately led to the demise of the Roman Republic and his own death, and the Roman Republic was replaced by the Roman Empire under his adopted son Augustus. In addition to his role as a governor and consul, Julius Caesar also served as a praetor, which was a high-ranking magistracy in the Roman Republic. As praetor, he was responsible for administering justice and enforcing the law in Rome and its territories. He was also responsible for overseeing the legal system, including the administration of courts and the appointment of judges. During his time as praetor, Caesar was known for his efforts to reform the legal system and make it more efficient. He introduced a number of measures to streamline the legal process, including the use of written pleadings and the establishment of a court of appeals. He also sought to make the law more accessible to the people by publishing legal codes and making them widely available. In addition to his reforms, Caesar was also known for his fairness and impartiality as a judge. He was known for his ability to resolve disputes. 60. Quickly and for his ability to make just and fair decisions. He was also known for his ability to handle complex legal cases and for his ability to apply the law consistently and objectively. It is clear that Julius Caesar played an important role in the legal system of the Roman Republic, both as a governor, consul and praetor. His reforms helped to make the legal system more efficient and more accessible to the people, and his fairness and impartiality as a judge helped to ensure that justice was served. However, his actions ultimately led to the demise of the Roman Republic and his own death in 44 BC, and the Roman Republic was replaced by the Roman Empire under his adopted son Augustus. William Blackstone William Blackstone was an 18th century English jurist, judge, and politician. He is most famous for his influential treatise commentaries on the laws of England which became a standard work on the common law of England and was widely read by lawyers, judges, and law students. In the United States, the commentaries were influential in the development of the common law in the United States and in the formation of the 61. United States Constitution. Blackstone's work helped to establish the fundamental principles of the law and constitutional government in the United States. Blackstone's commentaries were first published in four volumes between 1765 and 1769. The work is divided into four books, of the rights of persons of the rights of things of private wrongs and of public wrongs. The commentaries cover a wide range of topics, including the nature of law, the rights and duties of citizens, property law, criminal law, and the powers and responsibilities of government. Blackstone's work was highly influential in the development of the common law system in the United States. The commentaries were widely read by American lawyers, judges, and law students, and were considered a standard work on the law for many years. The commentaries were also used as a textbook in the early law schools in the United States, and many of the founding fathers, including James Madison and Thomas Jefferson, were familiar with Blackstone's work. 62. Blackstone's ideas about the nature of law and the role of government had a lasting impact on the United States. His emphasis on the importance of the rule of law and the protection of individual rights helped to shape the legal and political institutions of the United States. His work 
also played an important role in the development of the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Blackstone was also a member of the British Parliament and a judge. He held several legal and academic positions throughout his career, including as a professor of law at Oxford University, where he delivered a series of lectures on the laws of England which were later used as the basis for the commentaries. In addition to his legal and political contributions, Blackstone was also known for his scholarship in other areas, such as history and economics. He wrote several other works, including a discourse on the study of the law a summary view of the feudal law and an analysis of the laws of England. Blackstone's commentaries continue to be widely read and studied today, both in the United 63 Kingdom and the United States. They are considered a classic work on the common law and continue to be an important source of reference for lawyers, judges, and legal scholars. In summary, William Blackstone was an 18th century English jurist, judge and politician, his famous treatise Commentaries on the Laws of England which became a standard work on the common law of England and was widely read by lawyers, judges, and law students in the United States. His ideas about the nature of law and the role of government had a lasting impact on the United States and in the formation of the United States Constitution. Lord Denning Lord Denning, also known as Alfred Thompson. Denning, was a British judge and jurist who served as a Lord Justice of Appeal and later as Master of the Rolls. He was one of the most prominent and influential judges of the 20th century in England and Wales. He served as a judge for over 40 years, from 1944 to 1982. Lord Denning was known for his clear and concise writing style, which made his judgments. 64. Easy to understand for the general public. He was also known for his strong sense of justice and his willingness to make decisions that were not always popular with the legal establishment. He was a strong advocate for the rights of the individual and was often willing to go against the tide of public opinion in order to protect those rights. Lord Denning's judgments covered a wide range of areas of law, including contract law, tort law, and criminal law. He was particularly influential in the development of the law of negligence, and his judgments in this area are still widely cited. Today, he was also known for his approach to common law which is often referred to as Denning's law, which was the view that common law should evolve with the time and the society, and should not be stuck in the past. Lord Denning's contributions to the law have had a lasting impact and his judgments continue to be studied and referenced to this day. 65. In addition to his judicial work, Lord Denning was also a prolific writer and author. He wrote several books on legal topics, including The Discipline of Law, The Due Process of Law, and The Family Story. He also wrote a number of articles and essays on legal topics and was a regular contributor to legal journals and newspapers. Lord Denning was also an advocate for legal education and was a strong supporter of the Legal Research Institute at Oxford University. He was also involved in the establishment of the Society of Legal Scholars and was its president. From 1956 to 1957, Lord Denning was awarded several honours during his lifetime, including being made a knight. Bachelor in 1957 and a life peer in 1971. Becoming Lord Denning. Baroness Hale. Baroness Hale of Richmond, also known as Brenda Marjorie Hale, is a retired British judge and former president of the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom. She was the first woman to hold that position. She was also the first woman to be appointed as a Lord of Appeal in Ordinary. 66. Which is a judge who sits in the House of Lords. Baroness Hale was appointed to the Court of Appeal in 2004 and to the Supreme Court in 2009 she was known for her work on family law, human rights, and equality issues. She retired in 
January 2020. In addition to her judicial work, Baroness Hale has also been an active member of the legal community. She has held numerous positions, including being a member of the Law Commission and the Human Rights Committee. And she has also been a visiting professor at several universities. She is also known for her contributions to legal education and was president of the Council of Legal Education and of the Society of Legal Scholars. Her work has been recognized by several awards and honoris, including being appointed a Dane Commander of the Order of the British Empire in 2004, and later in 2017, appointed to the Order of Merit, which is one of the highest honors that can be bestowed on a person in the United Kingdom. 67. Baroness Hale's contributions to the legal profession and her role as a trailblazer for women in the judiciary have made her an important figure in the legal community. Baroness Hale has also been an advocate for greater diversity and inclusion in the legal profession, and has spoken about the importance of having a judiciary that reflects the society it serves. She has also been vocal about the need to improve access to justice for all and the importance of making the legal system more user-friendly. In addition to her work as a judge, Baroness Hale has also written and spoken extensively on legal issues, and her opinions and judgments are widely respected and studied. Baroness Hale has been a leading figure in the legal profession for many years, and her contributions have had a significant impact on the development of the law in the United Kingdom and beyond. Her work has been instrumental in promoting greater equality and fairness in the 68 legal system, and her efforts to improve access to justice for all have been widely praised. Jason Rayburn Jason Rayburn was appointed as one of the youngest ever UK High Court judges at 32. Jamal Jeffers was appointed as one of the youngest ever deputy district judges in the UK in 2022. Rosalind Higgins Dame Rosalind Higgins, DBE, QC, FBA, is a British lawyer and academic who is known for her expertise in international law. She served as a judge on the International Court of Justice, ICJ, from 1995 to 2009, and was the first woman to hold the position of president of the ICJ from 2006 to 2009. Throughout her legal career, Dame Rosalind has been actively involved in international legal organizations and institutions. She has served as a member of the United Nations International Law Commission, the United Nations Human 69 Rights Committee, and the United Nations Security Council. Dame Rosalind is also a respected academic, having held numerous teaching positions at universities in the United Kingdom, United States, and Australia. She has written and edited several books and articles on international law and related topics, and her work is widely respected and influential in legal circles. Dame Rosalind was made a Queen's Counsel in 1979 and was appointed as a Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire in 2008. She is a Fellow of the British Academy and a member of several other professional societies and organizations. She is currently still active and continues to contribute to the field of international law through her writings and lectures. Dame Rosalind began her legal career as a practicing barrister in London, where she specialized in international law, human rights and public international law. She was appointed as a professor at the University of London in 1971 and held various positions at the university, including 70. Head of the Department of Law and Dean of the Faculty of Laws. In addition to her academic career, Dame Rosalind has also held several important positions in international legal organizations and institutions. She has been a member of the United Nations International Law Commission the United Nations Human Rights Committee, and the United Nations Security Council. She 
was also a member of the Permanent Court of Arbitration, which is responsible for resolving disputes between states and other entities through arbitration and other forms of dispute resolution. Dame Rosalyn is also a respected academic, having held numerous teaching positions at universities in the United Kingdom, United States, and Australia. She has written and edited several books and articles on international law and related topics, and her work is widely respected and influential in legal circles. Her contribution to the field of international law is widely recognized and appreciated. She has been awarded numerous honors and awards for her work, including the Manly O. Hudson Medal. 71. Of the American Society of International Law, the Grotius Prize of the British Institute of International and Comparative Law, and the Sir Robert Jennings Prize of the British Branch of the International Law Association. William Brett First Viscount Isha. William Brett First Viscount Isha was a British judge, politician, and legal advisor who lived in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. He served as a judge of the Queen's Bench Division of the High Court from 1891 to 1894, and later as Master of the Rolls from 1894 to 1899. He was also active in politics, serving as a member of Parliament for several years and as a member of the House of Lords from 1899 until his death in 1899. Viscount Isha was also known for his role as a legal advisor to the British government. He was a member of several royal commissions and committees, including the Royal Commission on the Public Services in India and the Committee on the Public Records. He also served as legal advisor to the Board of Trade and the Home Office. 72. As a political figure, Viscount Isha was a member of the Liberal Party, and held various positions, including Under Secretary of State for the Colonies and President of the Board of Trade. He also had a close relationship with King Edward VII, and was appointed as a Privy Councillor in 1902. Viscount Isha was also known for his literary and historical works, he wrote several books and Articles on a wide range of topics, including legal history, British politics, and the history of the British Empire. He passed away on 20 January 1915. Viscount Isha was also known for his role as a legal advisor to the British government. He was a member of several royal commissions and committees, including the Royal Commission on the Public Services in India and the Committee on the public records. He also served as legal advisor to the Board of Trade and the Home Office. 73. In addition to his judicial and political roles, Viscount Isha was also an active member of the British legal community. He was a member of the Bar Council, the governing body of the Bar in England and Wales, and was also a member of the Council of Legal Education, which is Responsible for the training and education of barristers in England and Wales. As a political figure, Viscount Isha was a member of the Liberal Party, and held various positions, including Under Secretary of State for the Colonies and President of the Board of Trade. He also had a close relationship with King Edward VII, and was appointed as a Privy Councillor in 1902. Viscount Isha was a respected and influential figure in British legal and political circles, known for his contributions to the development of British law and his role in shaping the legal and political landscape of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. In addition to his legal and political career, Viscount Isha was also known for his literary and historical works. He wrote several books and articles on a wide range of topics, including legal. 74. History, British politics, and the history of the British Empire. He was also a collector of rare books, manuscripts and works of art, and his collection was considered one of the finest of its kind in the country. He was a member of the Royal Historical Society and the Royal Society of 
literature. Viscount Isha was also a member of several clubs and societies, including the Athenaeum, the Reform Club, the Travellers Club and the Marlborough Club. He was a patron of the arts and was a member of the Royal Academy of Arts. Viscount Isha was also a respected and influential figure in British legal and political circles, known for his contributions to the development of British law and his role in shaping the legal and political landscape of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. His work and contributions have been widely recognized and respected by both legal professionals and the general public. In addition to his legal and political career, Viscount Isha was also known for his philanthropy. He supported several charitable 75 organizations and causes, including education, the arts and the welfare of veterans. He was also actively involved in the support of various cultural institutions, including the National Portrait Gallery, the Victoria and Albert Museum, and the British Museum. He also supported the establishment of the Brett Building at King's College London, which houses the King's College Law School. Viscount Isha was a respected and influential figure in British legal and political circles, known for his contributions to the development of British law and his role in shaping the legal and political landscape of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. His work and contributions have been widely recognized and respected by both legal professionals and the general public. He was also known for his philanthropy and support of various cultural institutions. Despite his passing, on 1915, his legacy remains alive through his contributions to the legal system, politics and culture of Britain. Lord Richard Wilberforce 76. Lord Richard Wilberforce was a British judge and legal scholar who served as a Lord of Appeal in Ordinary, also known as a Law Lord, from 1964 to 1982. He was known for his expertise in public law and his ability to convey complex legal issues in a clear and concise manner. Throughout his legal career, Lord Wilberforce was involved in several high profile cases. He also made significant contributions to the development of the law of negligence and the law of contract. He was also a member of the Law Commission, where he played an important role in the reform of English law. Lord Wilberforce also wrote several books and articles on legal topics, and was a respected legal commentator. He was a fellow of All Souls College, Oxford, and held several academic positions. Lord Bingham. Lord Bingham of Cornhill was a British judge and legal scholar who served as the Lord Chief. 77. Justice of England and Wales from 1996 to 2000. He was also a member of the House of Lords, where he sat as a crossbencher. Throughout his legal career, Lord Bingham was known for his strong commitment to the rule of law and his influential writings on a wide range of legal topics, including human rights, constitutional law, and the common law. He was also a leading advocate for the modernization and reform of the legal system in the UK. In addition to his judicial roles, Lord Bingham also held several important positions in the legal profession, including serving as the master of the roles from 1992 to 1996, and as the senior law lord from 2000 to 2008. He was also a member of the Judicial Appointments Commission, which is responsible for the selection and appointment of judges in England and Wales. Lord Bingham was also a prolific writer and commentator on legal issues. He wrote several books and numerous articles on topics such as human rights, the rule of law, and the common law, and his work is widely respected and influential in legal circles. 78. He was also a strong advocate for the modernization and reform of the legal system in the UK. He was a strong supporter of the Human Rights Act 1998, which incorporated the 
European Convention on Human Rights into UK law, and he also supported the creation of the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom in 2009. Judge Patrick Lipton Robinson International Court of Justice Judge Robinson is from Jamaica and is an International Court of Justice judge a very senior position. He has been doing the job since 2015. Although formerly an English teacher, he was called to the bar at Middle Temple in the late 1960s and then worked in public services for the decades that followed in various legally related positions including Deputy Solicitor General for Jamaica. He represented Jamaica at the United Nations for 26 years and he studied at University College of the West Indies. 79. Practical Guide to Law and Law for the Layperson. This is a short section. If you need assistance with law, this is not advice but it would be best to hire a lawyer because that is what they specialize in. You could phone 0207 867 3744 or go to www.barristerlondon.co.uk to instruct a direct access barrister. These are some general points you might want to be aware of generally. A practical guide to law in England and the United States. In England, the legal system is based on common law, which means that laws are based 80 on previous court decisions and legal precedents, and also statutes made by Parliament. The court system is divided into several levels, including the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal, the High Court, and the Crown Court. The lower courts of first instance are the magistrates and county courts. In the United States, the legal system is based on federal law and individual state laws. The court system is divided into federal courts and state courts. Each state also has its own constitution and set of laws. If you are seeking legal advice or representation, it is important to do research and find a reputable lawyer who specializes in the area of law that pertains to your case. Before hiring a lawyer, it is also a good idea to ask for references and to schedule a consultation to discuss your case and the lawyer's experience and qualifications. It's also important to note that laws in both countries change frequently, so it's important to make sure you have the most up-to-date information. 81. Step-by-step -step guide of instructing a lawyer in England. 1. First, research and select a qualified lawyer who specializes in the area of law that pertains to your case. 2. Contact the lawyer and schedule a consultation to discuss the details of your case. This is typically done over the phone or in person. 3. Provide the lawyer with all relevant information and documentation related to your case. This may include contracts, emails, witness statements, and any other evidence you have. 4. Work with the lawyer to develop a strategy for your case. This may involve drafting legal documents, filing motions, or preparing for trial. 5. Keep in regular communication with your lawyer and stay informed about the progress of your case. 6. Follow the lawyer's advice and instructions throughout the legal process. 7. Be prepared to pay any legal fees or expenses as they arise. 82. 8. Be prepared to attend court as needed and represent yourself in court if your lawyer is not available. 9. Be prepared to make any necessary decisions regarding settlements or plea bargains, with your lawyer's guidance. 10. Finally, be prepared to take the necessary steps to enforce any court orders or judgments that may be made in your favor. 11. Once your case is resolved, review the outcome with your lawyer and understand the final judgment or agreement reached. 12. Make sure to understand any post-judgment actions that need to be taken, such as paying any fines or restitution, and comply with them. 13. Keep copies of all the legal documents and court orders related to your case for future reference. 14. If you are not satisfied with the outcome of your case, discuss the possibility of appeal.
or further legal action with your lawyer. 15. Be sure to thank your lawyer for their services and consider leaving a review of your experience to help others in finding a good lawyer. 83. 16. Keep track of all the communication with the lawyer and all expenses incurred during the process. 17. If you are not satisfied with the services provided by the lawyer, you can file a complaint with the legal ombudsman. 18. If you are experiencing financial difficulties, you may be eligible for legal aid. Your lawyer can guide you through the process of applying for legal aid. 19. Be aware of the time limits for filing lawsuits or making a claim in England, and make sure to meet these deadlines. 20. Remember that the lawyer is working for you and is there to help you navigate the legal system, so don't hesitate to ask any questions or express any concerns you may have. 21. When working with a solicitor, it is important to understand the terms of the retainer agreement. This is a written agreement that sets out the scope of the work to be done, the fee arrangements, and any other relevant terms. Make sure you understand and agree to the terms before you sign the retainer agreement. 84. 22. Be mindful of the time frame for the completion of the work and keep your lawyer informed of any change in circumstances or new information that may affect the case. 23. Be prepared to provide any additional information or documentation that may be required by your lawyer. 24. It's also important to understand the process of resolving disputes with your lawyer, in case of any disagreement on the terms of the retainer agreement, or any other issues. 25. Lastly, it is important to maintain open and honest communication with your lawyer throughout the process, to ensure the best possible outcome for your case. 26. Before signing any agreements or making any decisions, be sure to thoroughly review and understand the terms and conditions. 27. Keep copies of all the documents and correspondence related to your case for future reference. 28. Be aware of any deadlines or time limits that may apply to your case, and make sure to meet them in a timely manner. 29. Be prepared to attend any meetings or court appearances that may be required as part of the legal process. 85. 30. Understand the process for obtaining legal aid and the eligibility criteria, in case you may require it. 31. Understand the process for making a complaint if you are not satisfied with the service provided by your lawyer. 32. Lastly, be prepared to pay any legal fees or expenses that may be incurred as part of the legal process. It's important to keep in mind that this is a general guide, and the specific steps and process of instructing a lawyer in England may vary depending on the specifics of your case and the lawyer you choose to work with. It is always best to communicate openly and frequently with your lawyer to ensure the best outcome for your case. It is also worth noting that in England and Wales, the legal profession is divided into solicitors and barristers. Solicitors handle most of the work in relation to a case, such as giving advice and preparing documents, while barristers are specialists in court advocacy and will represent clients in court. Your lawyer will advise you which type of legal professional will be best for your case. 86. 87. A.D. 0207 867.